Hey, I'm Robin and this is BitBirdie and welcome to devlog number 8. First off, I want to show you guys the new health hearts. I listened to all your feedback from the comment section, Twitter, and Reddit and came up with this. So on the left we have the old hearts which are made of wood and have four stages and on the right are the new hearts which are made of glass and only have two stages. The player needs to easily be able to see the difference between an intact heart and a cracked heart. So I had the cracked heart be a little bit darker in color and the cracks are pretty dark as well. There's also a fun little glass shatter effect when the heart goes from the cracked stage to empty. I actually used two different Particle 2D nodes for this, shards big and shards small, because I wanted to use two different textures just to give it a bit of variation. I'm pretty happy with the hearts now, so thanks to everyone for the feedback. After finishing the hearts, I finally got around to building one of the most important mechanics in bullet hell games, the dash. I recently found out about this game called Archvale, which is pretty similar to what I'm going for with my game. I really liked how the dash looked, so I tried doing something similar. My dash has three main elements, a sprite ghosting effect, a trail of dust particles, and a burst of dust particles at the back that changes rotation based on the direction of your dash. I'm just going to explain the ghost effect because I think it's pretty cool. So what's happening here is we're instancing a sprite at the player's location and assigning it the player texture at the current animation frame. Then we're using a shader to give it a white overlay and decreasing its alpha to zero over time. And then we're doing that a bunch of times throughout the dash. I got this idea from a tutorial by Runjin, so check it out if you want to do something similar in your game. I'll have it linked down in the description below. I'm also considering making a tutorial for this, so let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see. The last major thing I did was the death animation for the little sapling enemies. I initially wanted the whole thing to be a sprite animation, but I decided that drawing an explosion of twigs was just going to take too long. So I drew the leaves, but used a particle node for the body. Another little thing you'll notice is that the leaves animation doesn't play when the sapling is attacking or in cooldown, since it doesn't have leaves most of the time in those animation states. I'm not sure if I'll keep this because I really like the leaves animation, so hiding it is a little heartbreaking. Alright, I want to know if any of you actually noticed that the whole game is more zoomed out than in my previous devlogs. Here's how zoomed in it used to be. After seeing some other similar games, I realized that I needed to zoom out so that you could see more of what's going on around you. Before we end this video, I just want to mention the Go Godot Jam. So this is a Godot Engine game jam and it already has 535 people signed up. So it starts on May 23rd or 24th depending on where you are in the world. Uh, but it's not just a game jam. So it's also a series of live streams and video, uh, YouTube video premieres that are going to be happening before the jam, during the jam, and also afterwards. As part of Go Godot Jam, I'll be releasing a video next week as a YouTube premiere, and it'll be about why I chose Godot over Unity for my pixel art games. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, or leave a comment down below with your feedback. I've been making an effort to try and reply to every single comment, so there's a definite possibility that I'll incorporate your feedback for my next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.